Bertemu kembali, negara di Asia Pasifik memerlukan pelaburan besar untuk memulihkan pembangunan di tengah pemulihan yang rapuh dan tidak sekata yang dijangka menurut laporan dikeluarkan Suruhanjaya Ekonomi dan juga Sosial Asia dan Pasifik Pertubuhan Bangsa Bersatu. Biarpun pemulihan yang kukuh dijangka, pemulihan diunjurkan dalam bentuk K. Ini bermakna negara pendapatan rendah dan kumpulan rentan akan terpinggir dalam pemulihan dan tempoh peralihan. Dalam masa yang sama, 89 juta orang di rantau Asia dan juga Pasifik dijangka ditolak masuk ke dalam kumpulan miskin tegar dengan pendapatan $1.90 sehari maksimum. Untuk membincangkan keperluan pelaburan ini dan juga pemulihan yang tidak sekata yang dijangka, kita bersama Setiausaha Eksekutif Suruhanjaya Ekonomi dan juga Sosial Asia dan Pasifik ASCAP Pertubuhan Bangsa Bersatu, Dr. Armidal Sasiah Ali Syahbana. Uh, Dok, uh, izinkan saya meneruskan dalam bahasa Inggeris. Doktor, um, let me just quote the statement from the press release. Uh, the Asia Pacific region needs a large yet attainable investments in resilience to protect development gains amid a fragile and inequitable inequitable uh, post-COVID-19 economic recovery. Tell us more about this. What kind of investments and do you think governments in the Asia and Pacific region will still have room to spend during this pandemic? Yes, uh, because of the sheer size, you have the impact, negative impact of this COVID-19 pandemic, especially in the so social and economic uh, aspect mm -hmm. uh, of, of people in Asia Pacific. So therefore, investment, the urgent investment needed is how to mitigate, especially in the health-related sector. Mm -hmm. So universal health coverage, strengthening healthcare system, as well as scaling up social protection, that's a must. And also, second is then again, yeah, how also to strengthen the digital infrastructure, mm -hmm. the di digital infrastructure, because we know, yeah, for education, for health, as well as for to migrate, yeah, such as retail sector and so on, yeah. So uh, the economic activity still uh, can be uh, uh, keep flowing mm -hmm. for certain sectors, uh, certainly, yeah, including mm -hmm. education. And, and so on. So these are the key, I think, investment that is most urgently needed. But do you think governments still have money to spend during this pandemic, uh, looking at how they've invested so much uh, to support the economy? Yeah, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. The fiscal stimulus, but again, fiscal stimulus, not only uh, to mitigate the impact again, but also to be directed into the productive how to increase the productivity. That's why that digi digital digitalization is also very important. And about the financing, yeah, of mm -hmm. course, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, countries have, are in different, different uh, fiscal situation, different fiscal situation, but in general, average in Asia Pacific, I think we are in a better, much better position. But of course, mm -hmm. if the crisis is prolonged, yeah, it prolonged, yeah, mm -hmm. then it will be a challenge. And, and despite a, a, a reasonably strong rebound expected in 2021, uh, a K-shaped recovery is likely with poorer countries and more vulnerable groups marginalized in the post-pandemic recovery and transition period. What will happen to the people, uh, the, the, the people in less developed countries in this region? Which sectors or employees or communities uh, do you believe will witness uneven recovery? Yes, that is the risk. The risk, mm. yeah. Again, I underline that is the risk, uh, especially people in the informal sector, SME, the marginalized, and so on. If yeah, government do not provide the needed support and also uh, the needed investment for them to transition, yeah. Mm. And and then second, also regarding sectors, regarding sectors, yeah. As mm. as we see, several sectors are impacted more or most, such as tourism, travel-related, hospitality, restaurant, and that kind of thing. Retail, retail, yes, mm -hmm. uh, except if the retail that is already uh, uh, went online. Uh, remittance, if the countries have quite a significant migrant workers, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, their population are migrant workers, also remittance drop. Yeah, so these are the sectors that uh, I think will need time to rebound, if at all rebound. Yeah, because again, there will be change also mm -hmm. in the pattern, in the pattern of how we work, how we mm -hmm. travel, yeah, how we conduct our meeting, yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 all this. Yeah, so it's not 
100% going back to the pre-COVID, there is some change, and therefore this is the opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we need to invest, yeah, to recover in uh, in more inclusive, the so-called more inclusive, more in resilient, and also more sustainable compared to the pre-COVID time. Speaking of post-COVID, yeah, doctor, looking, this is what uh, the statement uh, says, looking beyond the pandemic, the survey examines the broader risk landscape facing Asia-Pacific countries, including epidemics, natural disasters and financial crisis. Um, and it advises countries to take a more comprehensive approach to building resilience against uh, future shocks. This, the, the, are wide-ranging uh, risks and with the current state of things, can government really prepare for this risk in the future? Do you think governments are right now a bit short-sighted when it comes to planning, uh, seeing that things are moving really fast and you can't really plan um, so far ahead? So how do they balance that, spending right now and addressing issues right now with regards uh, to the pandemic and also planning for these other future shocks in the future? Yes, I think the question is not uh, whether government should, mm -hmm. but definitely uh, they should, yeah, uh, to take into account risk, to factor in risk, yeah, uh, uh, including from the start of when they plan their national development program and so on, and as well as project and action plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the pandemic is only one of the risks, but unfortunately it becomes this, this very, very huge risk, yeah that uh, relate to health-related uh, zoonotic diseases. And basically, yeah, mm -hmm. basically the relationship between human and nature, and economy, human and nature, these, yeah, these, uh, what, nexus, uh, which has not been taken into, uh, well, taken in, into account previously. So we need to take that into account. And then for several countries in the region, uh, there are also this uh, this ongoing or added risk yeah, of natural disaster. As yes. you know, some countries are more prone to earthquake yeah? uh, and, and, and so on. Yeah? And then the third one, climate change, which impacts all countries. Yeah? Sea level rise, temperature uh, you know, increase, mm -hmm. which impacts everywhere. Yeah? Uh, the impact is to everywhere, all sectors, everywhere, and especially the vulnerable uh, uh, group that usually impacted the most because they do not have the means yeah, mm -hmm. on how to mitigate. So that's why the government needs to factor in into their plan yeah, well in advance, not to wait until uh, the, the unfortunate event occur, happen, and then you try to mitigate as well, and then I think it's, it's too late by then. And the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has recommended in a policy brief on preventing debt crisis in the era of COVID-19 and beyond the time to act is now that countries address immediate liquidity constraints, debt overhangs and create space for investment in crisis response. Uh, this sounds like a very generic plan and for countries that can really afford to allocate funds into these different measures. But we all know that countries in Asia or in the Asia Pacific vary when it comes to economic growth and progress and the ability to finance measures against COVID-19. So what would you recommend to all these countries in Asia Pacific or at least the um, low income countries in the Asia Pacific region? Yes, again, yeah, no countries can uh, overcome uh, this huge uh, crisis alone. So therefore, we need to strengthen mm -hmm. this regional and international uh, uh, what, uh, cooperation collaboration. With regard to the, 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 the debt, yeah? the debt issue, debt situation, especially for those countries that, that are highly indebted, the LDCs, as well as the middle income, the so-called vulnerable middle income countries in terms of that situation. Yeah? So globally, there is this initiative initiated by the Secretary General, UN, as well as, of course, yeah, in partnership with, with all stakeholders on this debt suspension for those particular countries. Yeah? Debt relief for selected uh, highly indebted countries. And third, on how to also find yeah, mm. other source of financing yeah, to then to recover better, but aligning with the sustainable development 
uh, goal. Mm -hmm. yeah? So align uh, using sustainable development as the compass. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Investment, for example, just a quick investment in energy, more re renewable, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah? And, um, uh, and, yeah. and finally, Doctor, for... Uh, uh, according to the press release as well, for a more robust and inclusive recovery, the survey calls for a more synchronized COVID-19 vaccination program across uh, countries and highlights opportunities to leverage regional cooperation. Do you think that is still lacking right now? Yeah, again, yeah, despite the vaccination, I think that the biggest challenge is availability. Mm. Availability because demand far outweighs. <laughs> The supply, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's the first one, and and second is affordability to get the vaccine for certain uh, low developing countries, of course, and third is more the, this logistic distribution and implementation of the vaccination and so on, and fourth is the effectiveness of the vaccine itself. We don't know, mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, there is this COVAX facility, COVAX facility yep. for the the yeah for the least developed and uh, lower middle income country at least yeah through that facility about 20 to 30 percent of their vaccine needs yeah can mm -hmm. be provided but again because of this availability yeah so now uh, we cannot immediately right uh, provide uh, or that facility provide this so it takes time yeah? so therefore we need collaboration for advanced country if they could yeah mm -hmm. share some of their uh, vaccines availability also uh, to share with the rest of the country. Okay. Otherwise, we cannot we cannot have this recovery. Yeah, we um, cannot have this recovery soon, anytime soon. Yeah, it will take much longer. Just briefly on that. So, do you think without this sharing of the vaccine supply? And with the uh, very truncated uh, uh, application of the vaccination program in different different countries, um, you believe that the K recovery will become worse? And that is the risk. That is the mm. risk. Yeah. Uh, that's why we we understand that is the risk. That's why we need to prevent mm. that risk from happening. Again, key is international cooperation and collaboration yeah, among the countries. But, uh, of course, we understand, yeah, needs time, yeah, mm. needs time, yeah. But hopefully by the second semester of this year, towards the end of this year, as uh, more vaccines are available, which uh, the good news is also that, yeah, more vaccines are available and being, uh, what, authorized, yeah, emergency mm. authorization used by the respective authorities of their countries. So that's the good news. And the second good news also, apparently the vaccine uh, also proven that they can prevent severe illnesses uh, or the illness becomes severe, hospitalization and also death. Yeah, that, that's uh, some, some, I'm sure, uh, some relief to all of us. On that note, we thank you very much, uh, Dr. Armida Salsia, Ali Shabana, State Social Executive, Suruhan Jaya Economy dan juga Social Asia dan Pacific ASCAP, Pertubuhan Bangsa Bersatu membincangkan berkenaan dengan uh, tinjauan ASCAP berkenaan dengan pemulihan di Asia Pacific yang dijangka berdepan risiko uh, berbentuk K jika pelaburan tidak dibuat. Itu saja daripada saya untuk Niaga Awani pada pagi ini. Sekian Niaga Awani ikuti info terkini berhubung vaksin COVID-19 di halaman Micro Interactive di Astro astroawani.com sekarang dan segala maklumat lain dalam astroawani.com juga aplikasi Astro Awani. Terima kasih kerana menonton saluran berita paling dipercayai di Malaysia. Saya Riza Zulkafri. Salam hormat.